we started a content business, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, how we got started, some problems that we're facing, uh, why we expect we can win in the future. Stick around right after the stinger. Hey, I'm Felix Sharp at Sharp Review on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. I'm one of the owners and proprietors of CampusToCanton.com. Now, if you are if you've been around this channel for a while, most of our videos are related specifically to the niche, talking about college football, et cetera, et cetera. But I thought it would be interesting and fun to do something just a little bit different, where we talk about the business, how we're actually building, what it is that we're doing, some problems that we're facing, because. Quite frankly, we're right in the middle of it right now. So why not be transparent? Somebody might find this helpful or interesting or yeah, engaging. I don't know. We'll see. If you like the video, if you like this type of content, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try to do something like this at least once a week to see if it gets any traction or maybe if I enjoy doing it. But I just wanted to try it. So uh, again, I'm one of the founders and proprietors of campus Canton.com, which in a general sense, is a fantasy football content business, um, specifically college fantasy football. So we provide subjective rankings, objective tools to tell folks how, uh, uh, if a player is going to be good in college and maybe even be a good NFL player. So this recent class with, you know, Anthony Richardson and Jameer Gibbs and Bijan Robinson, those guys, we talk to people about those players and provide objective tools to show, yep, he actually is good and he has an NFL future. In a really quick summary, that it is, that's what it is that we do. We sell subscriptions to the website to provide all of that information, magazines, et cetera, et cetera. So our business model isn't that much different from, you know, the streaming business with, uh, with Netflix or uh, the, even specifically the sports business with The Athletic, the magazine there, or um, Matthew Berry's Fantasy Life, specifically in the fantasy industry. We're kind of doing the same thing where we sell subscriptions to a service Hopefully that service provides quality content and then we reinvest in the business to provide better content. How did we get started? Well, we were playing in this type of league in 2020, really for the first time. Uh, if you're familiar with the fantasy football business or the fantasy football industry, you have traditional redraft where the majority of people who play fantasy football uh, play that format. And then you have dynasty fantasy football where you keep your players year over year we were playing that, so playing that version of fantasy football. But then in 2020, came across this really interesting thing where it's kind of like dynasty fantasy football, except you have a corresponding college fantasy team. So you have a whole college roster, and you're playing week to week, head to head against your friends in the college fantasy league. And then when those players declare for the NFL draft, they're added to your NFL team. And it was just really fun. I mean, I've been playing, I played college football. I've been a foot, my uncle played in the NFL for 12 years with three time pro bowler, you know, so this is kind of in my blood for someone like me who considered coaching, et cetera, et cetera. It was just a whole lot of fun. And I was doing a podcast at the time with Austin Nace and Matt Bruning. And we looked around, specifically Austin and Colin, uh, two uh, of the other co-founders here. We were playing in these leagues in 2020 and looked around the market and said, nobody's, pro nobody's providing any content or, you know, content specifically for this format. So uh, we started to do something on our own. I mean, at that time in 2020, if you looked for college fantasy related content, it really didn't exist, especially um, the depth of material that you needed for these types of leagues. I mean, on the college side, they often go 45 rounds. So you're talking about a lot of players in a 12 team league that are rostered. And so there was nothing uh, in the market that existed like uh, like that. And um, it's funny because there that's kind of the solution, the, a good thing and a bad thing. If you look at the problems for what it is that we're doing. There is no market that exists already that we can serve. Just for you know, example, when you watch entrepreneurship stuff, especially, especially channels on making YouTube content, they kind of teach you to uh, go start with a market that already exists. Self-help, music reactions, traditional fantasy football, uh, investment advice, cooking, real estate, all of those niches have a market existing already and you can just tap into it. On our hand, like when you 
use YouTube as a search engine and just type in college fantasy football, not a lot of content comes up. So I mean, we have the audacity to think that we can actually make this happen. But if you, again, use YouTube or Google as a search engine, there's just not a lot of information that comes up when you're talking about college fantasy football. Um, so we got to create it. We have to create it. Another issue is college football fans know the name on the front of the jersey. I am so surprised at how much they don't actually know the names on the back of the jersey. And I will give you an example here. Uh, Earlier this this year or last year in September, I went to Colorado's first home game. I was sitting with a group, uh, all Nebraska fans. They were playing Nebraska. This was a group that traveled with the team like on a yearly basis, traveled to see them. And uh, one of the wide receivers made an excellent play down the field. I turned to the guy to my left. I said, who is that? Had no clue. Had no clue who this guy was, who the player, this starting wide receiver was. Um, uh, and he travels with the team. I think that this is probably the norm for college fans. Because there's so much turnover, because of the transfer portal, because, you know, again, the rosters shift every single year, as opposed to NFL uh, NFL fans, like they just don't know who the players are, even if they are passionate enough about the team. I just found that so, so interesting. On the other hand, NFL fantasy fans, they're very intimidated by the college. There are 133 FBS teams. We find that a lot of people can be intimidated by that player pool. Um, So two, there, there's two obstacles that we're facing. Oh, here's another one. Uh, The big fantasy platforms, fantasy football platforms, ESPN, Yahoo, Sleeper, MFL, they're just not invested in the college fantasy space. They don't provide content for it. They don't, it's not provided on their platforms, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe I'll make, I've got some indications why after having some conversations in this space, maybe I'll make a video about why that's the case later on. But why could it work? Why could what it is that we're doing actually work? I think our market, our potential market that we're trying to go grow um, really fits into two buckets. You have these college football fans who don't play fantasy football, who I mentioned already, this my, my friend here in Nebraska. They're passionate and loyal about their teams. If you're traveling to watch a, te- a, a, a team that you expect to lose, I mean, these people are actually absolutely passionate about their teams. They might even be passionate about their conferences. With the emergence of NIL and players becoming more visible, is it possible that we can pull some of that passion and that um, that fandom to apply to the individual players. Can I get an Alabama fan who's invested in that team and has been following them uh, for years? Can I get you to take that a step further and care about Justice Haynes or Jalen Hale or Jalen uh, Milrow? If you're a USC fan on the West Coast and you've been watching, you know, Caleb Williams, can I get you to take that a step further and be invested in Caleb Williams to play college fantasy football or a college fantasy adjacent fantasy football? Can I get you to care about Deuce Robinson or Zachariah Branch or, you know, Quentin Joyner or any of those guys? Uh, and you could take that, you could take that to a Tulane fan or a uh, UTEP fan or a uh, UConn fan. You can apply that across the country. Can we, again, at, with the emergence of, of NIL and players becoming more visible, can we pull some of pull on some of that to get you to care about the players individually and maybe play in a college fantasy adjacent league, a campus to Canton league. The other uh, uh, potential market is, is NFL fans who play dynasty fantasy football. And this is who the owners of our, our company of campus to Canton. This is who we were in 2020 playing dynasty fantasy football and enjoying it, but then getting a small taste of campus to Canton and, and having to identify college players early uh, uh, in, in, in trying to find out who the actual, the, where the talent is and the guys who, be, who could become NFL stars. Loved it. We all loved it. 
and if we're the we're the market we're trying to serve and so if we're if we love it why wouldn't other people and quite frankly uh people have loved it and i think i'll create a video again on some of our numbers and our growth here later on to show how with little to no following we've built a a business that generates revenue uh and again we'll probably get to that in in a uh, in another video so um can we make this happen can we make this happen can we create the market where one doesn't exist can we change the way fantasy football is played can we create enough moments to influence sleeper espn yahoo to adopt college fantasy football i think that we i i think that we can i think that we can if we market the right way if we tell the right story if we continue to accumulate traction i don't know that any of these barriers are insurmountable we have a comparatively small but extremely loyal customer base and what i mean by that is is th this is why i think that we're doing something right some of the biggest names in college football talk the biggest names in college football talk are subscribers of ours paid subscribers of ours some of the biggest names playing nfl fantasy football i don't even know if they play campus to can leagues or college leagues they're subscribers of ours i mean you can go Google our name and Warren Sharp, one of the biggest uh, fantasy betting uh, content providers out there. They cite to us. They cite to Campus to Ken. But there are others out there, again, that are, are customers of ours. That leads me to think that we're actually doing something right. I came across, it's funny, I was doing this video today because I came across this quote this morning and I thought <laughs> it's just really, really appropriate. Let's see if I can find it really quick. Um, the quote is from Eric Weinstein, who is, a, I think, a hedge fund manager and uh, a podcaster, some sort of influencer. I don't know that his name really matters that much, um, but I think thought that this quote was profound. When you're told that something is impossible, is that the end of the conversation or does that start a second dialogue in your mind? We're trying to create a second dialogue here where we can make Campus to Canton Leagues a prominent fantasy football format. Hey, if there's something that you want to hear about the, you know, the aspects of us building this business, let me know in the comments. If you've liked this video, let me know. I, I, I feel weird doing it this way because I can talk about football players all the time. And I've been doing it for the last three years. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do this well, but you can let me know in the comments how I can do better. And uh, again, what you want to hear from us as far as how we're building the business. I hope you liked it. Peace.